Hello, dear friends. I was preparing another topic, but current events dictate. Sometimes one tries to isolate oneself from human suffering in order to maintain balance, but this topic is very important. I can only express my solidarity with all the human beings who are currently suffering in such a dramatic moment for millions of Afghans. Precisely, this tragedy is taking place at the beginning of the conjunction of, conjunction of Pluto with Aries, of which I already spoke. Opinion piece. Crying for Afghanistan, the Kabul debacle worries the world. Chaos grips Kabul airport. United Nations calls on the world do not look the other way. Taliban declare war is over. Afghan president fled with cars full of cash. Spanish-American odyssey to escape Afghanistan. Germany and France try to collect thousands of Europeans. Spain sends plane to Kabul to repatriate its people. Frustration in Washington over abandonment of Kabul. Intelligence says no one heeded its warnings. Biden criticizes Afghan politicians, soldiers for surrendering. U.S. spent $2.26 billion on this war. Trump calls on Biden to resign over this military disaster. Afghans in Spain fear going back 50 years. Journalists, writers and actresses add their support for Afghan women. Women and girls, major victims of Taliban resurgence. Saudi Arabia urges Taliban to protect human lives. Islamic police in Nigeria beheat idolaters mannequins. Fires rage on in Spain, Morocco, Greece and Israel. July was the hottest month in the world on record. Let's start. Afghanistan has always been a country of legend, an important, an important part of the ancient Silk, Silk Road and the meeting point for many civilizations. Alexander the Great left his imprint of the extraordinary Greek culture there. It was a Buddhist and pacifist land with great neoclassical philosophers, but now it has fallen into the hands of religious fanatics called Taliban. No one has so far succeeded in dominating this country in the modern era, because first the British Empire failed, then the Soviet Union and now the US. Alexander the Great's conquest in 331 before Christ brought about more than anywhere else a wonderful cultural symbiosis between Greece, Iran and India. After Alexander's death, satrapies remained, waging bloody struggles. Successively, the country was dominated by the Seleucid, Seleucids, the Indian dynasty of the Maurya and the Bactrian kingdom. In the 60s, when hippies made overland pilgrimage to Kathmandu in colorfully painted DKW bands, they bought wolfskin coats in Afghanistan for cheap and said that the best marijuana in the world was grown there. The Afghans were very friendly and hospitable, as the spiritual tradition of Islam dictates, and now this beautiful country has become a ring because of its civil war. Apparent calm. After 20 years of war, the Taliban have taken Afghanistan in just a few days and almost without, without firing a shot. The Afghan army, several times outnumbered but greatly demoralized by the withdrawal of US troops, fled in terror at their presence, as did 
tens of thousands of people from all over the country who sought refuge in the capital. The takeover of Afghanistan leaves an upsetting and dangerous scenario for a country that has lived under the control of Taliban militias before became what became American longest war, which ended without victory, with a bitter crisis for the country and ushering in what could be one of the greatest humanitarian crises of our time. The panic and chaos in the airport contrasts with the apparent calm that reigns in the areas controlled by the Taliban. Their spokesmen insist they will not retaliate against the population, although there are reports of looting and abuse by their militiamen in some localities. Victorious Taliban fighters patrolled the streets of Kabul on Monday as thousands of Angas Afghans stomped the city's airport trying to flee the fiat government. Russian ambassador to Afghanistan Dmitry Tsirnov said, in quotes, Surprisingly, the situation is perfectly calm in general. Today, key Taliban forces quietly ended Kabul. Before that, the top leadership of the Taliban warned all their units not to harass people, not to enter houses, not to touch anyone and to observe order. In addition, a day before their arrival, the Taliban leadership informed the Afghan Ministry of Defense to ensure security in the city. Taliban spokesman Suhail Shaheen promised that Afghan women will not be deprived of job opportunities or education when they come to the power, on the condition that they remain bailed in public. Taliban literally means the students, a fundamentalist political paramilitary movement of Sunni Islam, whose first action dates back to 1994. Born in the early 90s in northern Pakistan, they were born out of the departure of Soviet soldiers from Afghanistan, and it is believed that their growth was financially supported by Saudi Arabia, a Sunni hotliner. Their promise was to enforce their strict version of Sharia or Islamic law. Women and children, journalists, writers and actresses already have 30,000 supporters for Afghan women. The manifesto promoted by women from all over the world, among them renowned Spanish journalists, writers and actresses, who have asked the international community to open the doors to Afghanistan and Afghan women, has already been signed by more than 30,000 people in just 24 hours. Women and girls, great victims of the Taliban resurgence. The Taliban offensive is not going to suppose a change or an, an international threat for the moment. But from the internal point of view, the situation in Afghanistan is going to be very different, especially for women and girls who would be in a very difficult situation, according to Enrique Ayala. 80% of, of the people who have fled Afghanistan since May are women and children. 80% of the 250,000 250, Afghans who had fled their homes sin, since the end of May are women or, and children. They fear that the Taliban will once again impose their extremist interpretation of Islam. During the five years they ruled, they banned girls' education, women from working or traveling alone. The Taliban also carried out public executions, cut off the hands of thieves, and stoned women accused of adultery. In recent years, women had won issues 
such as girls being allowed to go to school or to be in parliament or in government or in business. Afghanistan is considered the most dangerous country in the world for women. In addition to poverty and corruption, Afghanistan is the most dangerous country in the world for women to live in. When other factors such as health, sexual and non-sexual violence, domestic violence and economic discrimination are taken into account. The maternal mortality rate is 1 in 11 births. 80% of women are illiterate and up to 80%, 87% I mean are illiterate and up to 80% suffer forced marriages. Women have no access to basic health services, no access to financial resources and lack the freedom to choose a partner. Furthermore, rape is not punishable by law. History. Excavations of prehistoric sites have revealed that humans lived in what is now Afghanistan at least 50,000 years ago, and that the agricultural communities in the area were among the first in the world. The territory was a meeting point for various civilizations that interacted and often confronted each other. It has been home to various peoples throughout the ages, most notably the Iranians. The territory was incorporated into important empires, including the Achaemenid, Macedonian, Maurya and Arab empires. Afghanistan declared its independence in the early 18th century and maintained a monarchical regime until 1973, when the Republic of Afghanistan was established, until 1978, when the communist-inspired Saur Revolution established the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan. The intervention of the Soviet Union in support of the communist government started the Afghan war against the Islamic guerrillas which received the support of the US, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan and other Western and Muslim nations. In 1989, the Soviets withdrew, but the civil war continued until 1996. The Taliban established the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan based on their interpretation of Sharia. Excuse me. In 2001, in reaction to the 9-11 attacks, an international NATO coalition led by the US entered the country in order to overthrow the Taliban and place the government constituting the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan in power, starting a new civil war in Afghanistan. In 2014, the US and NATO formally declared that they were abandoning the war, but, but kept troops in the country in support of the government. In September 2020, negotiations began between the government and the Taliban, who by then controlled more than half the, of the country's territory, with the aim of achieving peace and building a new constitutional regime that could combine both visions visions of the Islamic State. The negotiations didn't prosper and the parties remained in conflict until now. End of the war. Taliban declare war over Kaos Grips airport. Peace prevailed in Afghanistan on Monday, Taliban officials said, as the militants declared war a day after seizing the capital while Western nations rushed to evacuate their citizens throughout the airport. Taliban blockade Kabul airport as Afghans tried to flee. The Taliban have set up a security cordon firing warning 
shots to keep people away from the area. Later Monday, U.S. Major General Hank Taylor told reporters at the Pentagon that the Kabul airport is open again after flights were suspended earlier. Kabul evacuations stalled amid runway chaos. Thousands of civilians dis desperate to flee Afghanistan filled Kabul airport's only runway Monday after the Taliban seized the capital, prompting the US to suspend evacuations as it came under growing criticism at home for its withdrawal. Frantic scenes at Kabul airport as Afghans tried to flee. Several Afghans clung to the side of a US military plane at Kabul airport on Monday as they traveled through crowds desperate to flee the Taliban-controlled capital, a video widely shared on social media showed. Mass runoff. Hundreds of people were running on the runways of Kabul airport in the vague hope of boarding a US Army plane about to take off. Several people died Monday while trying to board one of the planes. At least two fell from a departing plane and three others were shot dead after a confused scuffle between a Taliban and US military. Afghans collapsed after trying to cling to a military plane taking off. Footage posted on social media shows at least two people falling and dying as a US military plane takes off from Kabul International Airport. In the video, at least two objects can be seen falling to the ground as the plane gains altitude. Afghan president fled with cars full of cash, forced to leave loot on an on airport tarmac. After resigning, former Afghan president Ashraf Ghani left his country with so much money he couldn't fit in his helicopter and was forced to leave some cash at the airport. The Russian embassy in Kabul said four cars were full of cash and some of the money was stuffed into a helicopter, but it didn't fit, but it didn't all fit. They tried to put all the money in the helicopter, but it didn't all fit. And some of the money was left lying on the asphalt runway, according to the embassy. Trapped. Americans trapped behind the Taliban checkpoints ask for help. Americans stranded in Afghanistan amid the Taliban takeover of the country have looked outside the Biden administration for help, as at least one Republican senator has received messages from stranded citizens in need of rescue. Hispanic American Odyssey to escape Afghanistan in time. The Taliban takeover of Afghanistan left several Hispanic Americans trying to escape the country. Argentina arranged for the repatriation of four of its citizens. Peru detailed how two of its own managed to escape to India and Chile, and devised a plan to provide accommodation for the sisters of a young Afghan woman studying in the country. The first of the two A400M aircraft of the armed forces, which will be used to repatriate Spaniards and Afghans who have collaborated with Spain in recent year, years, in plural, took off Monday night from Zaragoza to Dubai. Reactions Afghans in Spain are afraid of going back 50 years with the Taliban. The Afghan community in Spain is afraid of the Taliban coming to power in Afghanistan because of the risk that their country will go back more than a half a century in terms of rights and freedoms, and this will especially harm the future of children, women and intellectuals. Frustration 
in Washington over Kabul abandonment, frustration and anger over President Biden's handling of the Afghanistan evacuations is growing among administration officials, lawmakers from both parties and advocacy groups. U.S. intelligence says no one listened to its warnings. General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, declared last month that a Taliban victory in Afghanistan was not a foregone conclusion, but the intelligence community was also got this with was also got with its pants down, having allegedly given to the Taliban six to five years, then 80 months to take over the country, adjusting that timetable to a still generous 30 to 90 days. 30 to 90 days. Biden criticizes Afghan politicians, soldiers, for surrendering to Taliban. President Biden on Monday defended his decision to pull U.S. troops out of Afghanistan and criticized Afghan politicians and soldiers for deserting and leaving the country in the hands of the Taliban. Biden said the mission was never to build a nation, but to prevent attacks from the U.S. from Afghanistan. He warned the Taliban that Washington would respond with devastating force to any attack on its military or diplomatic personnel. Trump calls on Biden to resign over Afghanistan withdrawal disaster. Former President Trump, in a statement Sunday, called on Biden to resign in disgrace, in quotes, over his disastrous handling of the Afghanistan withdrawal. In quotes again, what Biden has done with Afghanistan is legendary. It will go down as one of the greatest defeats in U.S. history, he said. Biden authorizes the sending of another thousand soldiers to Afghanistan, bringing the total to 7,000. President Biden authorized the sending of another thousand soldiers to Afghanistan, bringing the number of U.S. military personnel in the Asian country to 7,000. The Pentagon will send additional soldiers to Kabul. Hours earlier, the State Department confirmed that the evacuation of U.S. Embassy employees to the Kabul airport had been completed. 9-11 has nothing to do with Afghanistan. Most Americans believe that invading Afghanistan was a mistake. But what is the point of acknowledging a mistake unless you learn for it? from it. Clyde Prestowitz, who was an advisor to the Secretary of Commerce in the Reagan administration, said that the U.S. international strategies require a thorough audit. He opined that something is fundamentally wrong at the heart of U.S. international thinking and understanding that they will deeply investigate it. Close quotes. U.S. spent $2.26 billion on the war in Afghanistan. Since 2001, the U.S. has spent mm, the mentioned amount in Afghanistan. Brown University estimates, yet Afghanistan still has one of the smallest economies of the, on the planet. Last year, the president said 90% of the population lived, lived on less than $2 a day. Poor as rats. The United Nations asked the world not to look the other way. The UN does not hide its consent at the fall of Afghanistan into the hands of the Taliban. The Secretary General of the Afghanization Antonio Guterres has asked the world not to look the other way at such a dramatic moment for millions of Afghans. Germany is trying to repatriate some 10,000 people and has already sent planes to the area. France, which has done the same, 
is also worried about what might happen. Turkey abandons Kabul airport plans. Turkey abandoned plans to take control of Kabul airport following the NATO withdrawal, but is ready to provide technical and security support if requested by the Taliban. Saudi Arabia urges Taliban to protect lives under Islamic principles. Saudi Arabia on Monday urged Taliban insurgents who seized Kabul and completed the sweep across the country to preserve lives, property and security as stipulated by Islamic principles. Nigeria's Islamic police beheat idolatrous mannequins. Islamist poli police in Nigeria's Kano state have ordered dummies in clothing stores to be beheaded for violating the Muslim ban or idolatry. Last year, officers shaved the heads of young men wearing mo mohawk hairstyles and scolded them for wearing low-rise pants. Haiti. Haiti quake death toll doubles to nearly 1,300. The death toll from a devastating earthquake in Haiti rose to 1,297 on Sunday as neighboring countries rushed to send aid and rescuers scrambled to find survivors buried under rubble. Anguished Haitians seek medical help in flooded hospitals after quake. Haiti's doctors struggled Monday in makeshift tents to shave the lives of hundreds of injured, including young children and elderly people outside hospitals overwhelmed by a massive earthquake. Haiti quake revives anger over aid response to past disasters. The earthquake that struck Haiti on Saturday revived anger over the response of international aid agencies to a devastating earthquake there 11 years ago, prompting calls to ensure that the nations do a better job of reaching the people who need them most. Fire. Fire continued to rage in Spain, France, Greece, Morocco, and Israel. In central Spain, a fire continues to rage and has already devastated 10,000 hectares of land with a diameter of 80 kilometers. Nearly a thousand people have, have, have had to be evacuated from five localities. The fire started on Saturday when a car caught fire between the towns of Navalagruz and Cepeda de la Mora in the province of Avila. This Monday, firefighters were still trying to extinguish the flames. Fortunately, the heat is beginning to subside in some areas of Spain, which could help to stabilize the fires from now on. However, in other places, is still above 40 degrees centigrade on Monday. Wildfires break out outside Athens. Two wildfires, fanned by strong winds, rushed out of control near Athens on Monday, forcing the evacuations of villages, but there were no immediate reports of casualties. Large fire hit southern France. Fires in Europe have been raging throughout the summer, and in southern France late last month, according to local media, large areas of vegetation were scorched by fire in the Bar region. Some 650 firefighters were involved in extinguishing the blaze to protect the inhabitants. Northern Morocco Firefighters continued Sunday night their efforts to fight the fires ravaging the forest of northern Morocco for the second day in a row. The shifting winds are not helping to control the fire. Massive fires racing outside Jerusalem. 
Israel's government has appealed for international help as the country grapples with a massive forest fire on the outskirts, outskirts of Jerusalem. The out-of-control fire has already devastated swathes of forest and farmland, threatening several villages. Some 75 firefighting crews and 10 aircraft are battling the blaze. July was the hottest month in the world in 142 years. In July 2021, has July 2021 has, has become the hottest month globally since records began in 1880, according to data released by the U.S. Weather Agency. Finals. Electricity will be 34% more expensive in August. The electricity bill in August will cost an average of 76.6 euros of high prices if high prices are maintained, which is 4.4% more than the record bill in July and 35% increase, 20 euros more per equivalent consumption compared to the August 2020 bill, according to the Organization of Consumers and Users. Tech and cyclical stocks pull Wall Street lower. Wall Street's major indexes fell on Monday as gloomy data from China sparked fears of a slowdown in global growth leading to risk averse sentiment and a move into defensive stocks amid political turmoil in, in Afghanistan. Oil prices fall. Oil prices fell more than 1% on Monday, falling for a third straight session after official data showed slowdown in China's refining output and economic activity. Higher inflation target could, could trigger jobs boom. The Federal Reserve may be grappling with an inflation problem, but two former top central bank officials argue that higher prices in the future may be what is needed to shift the entire economy to a higher level and generate a jobs boom that helps the broader set of people. Treasury opposes development back financing. The Treasury Department on Monday issued new energy financing guidance to multilateral development banks, saying the US would oppose their involvement in fossil fuel projects, except, except for some downstream natural gas facilities in poor countries. Tesla autopilot investigation opened. Automotive safety regulators said Monday they had opened a formal safety investigation into Tesla's autopilot driver assistance system in 665,000 vehicles built since 2014 after a series of crashes involving emergency vehicles. Global auto market continue to contract as vehicle sales fall due to chip shortage. Global new light vehicle sales showed a 6.3% decline in July compared to July 2020. Meanwhile, worldwide new light vehicle sales experienced 22% year-on-year growth in the first six months of 2021. U.S. seeks to revoke Russia's status as a market economy. The Commerce Department has launched an investigation to verify whether Russia is operating as a market economy over claims that the country subsidizes goods entering the U.S. According to the complaint, Russian exports were undervalued by more than 430%. China's economy under pressure as factory output retail sales growth slow sharply. China's industrial produc production and retail sales growth slowed sharply and missed expectations in July 
as fresh outbreaks and flooding disrupted business operations. Indian economy accelerates. Indian economy is showing a strong signs of recovery as several states begin to ease restrictions and cancel and cancel imposed blockades. Brazil's gold reserves rise nearly 100% in three months, as central bank doubles purchases. Brazil's central bank bought more than 62 tons of gold in the three months to July 2021, bringing the country's reserve to nearly 130 tons. Estimated growth in physical holdings reportedly amounted to 92.4%. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.